Okay, we're back with some more parallelograms, and we're going to be talking more about solving for the angles in this parallelogram with these diagonals in here. And ultimately, we want to find the values of x, y, z, and w. So, this is a parallelogram. I'm flat out telling you that's a parallelogram, and uh, all five properties of a parallelogram, parallelogram that has to be true. And so, just to recap, we have one pair of opposite sides that are parallel and not only do we have one we have two pairs of opposite sides that are going to be parallel and if you notice once we have those parallel lines that means that these two angles are going to be congruent why all the interior angles and we should also take note that these two angles in here, they're going to be congruent as well why for the same exact reason they are alternating interior angles as well so we can use that information to set those expressions equal to find x and y. Let's try to do that over here. So we got 2x plus 10 equals 3x minus 20. And if we solve for x, it looks like x turns out to be 30. All right, so let's draw a little line in the sand here. And what do we have? We have 2y minus 15 equals y plus 10. We know those two angles are going to be congruent because we got parallel lines and alternate interior angles. And so if we solve for y in here, y turns out to be 25. Now keep in mind, I'm not saying the angles are 30 and 25. I'm saying the values of x and y are going to be 30 and 25. So what do we need to do in order to find uh, the two other angles, uh, w and z? Well, we need to back substitute. We've done this plenty of times throughout the year. Let's find what these the measurement of these angles are. So let's uh, use x first in here. So what do we know? 2 times 30 is 60 plus 10 more is, that's going to be 70. So if I erase this whole thing in here, this is going to be 70 degrees in here. And that one's going to be 70. Because they're congruent angles. And if we use 25 in here, it looks like 25 plus 10, that is 35. So if I erase this whole thing in here, that is going to be 35, and that one's going to be 35. So, um, are we stuck? Are we not stuck? What do we see? Well, I see several angles so far uh, within uh, this parallelogram. So we see 70s and 35s, and we even see this 20 in here. Well, this 20 implies that this one has to be 20 because of all the interior angles. Um, but we didn't really need to know that to discover z. What we really needed to see to find z is, z is a part of this triangle here where we already know two angles. Well, 70 and 20 is 90, so that implies this other angle is going to be 90 degrees because of the angle sum theorem. And if that's 90, this is 90 in here because it's a linear pair and it's vertical angles and another linear pair. And so that should help us with the very last triangle in here, this blue triangle to find W. And what is W going to be? Well, I'm using the angle sum theorem again. We have 90 and 35. 90 and 35 adds up to 125. So what does that mean? Then this angle has to be 55 degrees. Why 55? Is because all three of those measurements uh, add up to be 180. And if that's 55, we should see that that's 55 as well because that's alternating interior angles. All right, we are done finding X, Y, Z, and W.